Yes, welcome everyone. Cannabis News, I'm your host Joe Claire. It's February 5th, 2020. show, as always, is presented to you by the Marijuana Times. MarijuanaTimes.org is where you can find us. Click the video tab there to find the show. There's a ton of great articles there as well. MarijuanaTimes.org. Today, we're talking about hemp in Kentucky, legalization plans in Minnesota, and some numbers from sales of adult-use marijuana in Michigan. All of that coming up. First, of course, Cannabis News is brought to you by NatureSide, nature-side.com, and their organic all-natural pesticides for safe and poison-free with NatureSide. Don't use harmful chemicals or banned pesticides. Be regulatory compliant in the state that you are growing in. If it's cannabis, of course, if it's something else that something's going to, someone is going to be ingesting, don't use harmful chemicals on that either. Do the right thing. Check out NatureSide, nature-side.com. Proud sponsor of Cannabis News. Thank you. Nature side for continuing to be awesome. His first story is by yours truly at marijuanatimes.org. Kentucky, a national leader in hemp, still faces struggles. And the hemp market is not shaking out, excuse me, the way a lot of uh, farmers hoped it would or thought it would or predicted it would. The CBD market is not what they thought it would be. The demand is just not there. So a lot of hemp growers are stuck with their crops. There's a couple of companies in uh, Kentucky that are facing bankruptcy challenges. I talked with Katie from Kentucky Hemp Works about the hemp program in Kentucky and their thoughts being a participant in the Kentucky Hemp Program about uh, what's been going on lately in the state. Katie said, we lobbied hard to encourage the Kentucky Department of Agriculture to remain a part of the 2014 hemp program, which they decided to do instead of going for the USDA interim rule. They're going to do another year in Kentucky under the pilot program from 2014. She said, our biggest concern with adopting USD rules, USDA rules early is that those rules are still being discussed and debated. We have some serious concerns with the USDA interim rule and did not want to see Kentucky adopting those rules until we had a chance to fix them. The vast majority of Kentucky growers and processors shared our concern, and we are collectively celebrating KDA's decision to wait. They say that mostly they've been, so far they've been mostly satisfied with the way the Kentucky Department of Agriculture has handled the hemp program in the state. As a program participant since 2014, Kentucky Hemp Works has voiced every concern and lobbied for every change thus far. Our concerns have largely been addressed, sometimes more slowly than we would like, but so far each problem has been fixed, with the exception of the state's ban on floral sales, no, i.e. no hemp cigarettes, teas, pelletized flour, etc. No CBD flour and such. It's um, As I point out in the article, there's it, this is new territory. I mean... It, hemp and cannabis in general has been illegal for many, many decades, and there's no roadmap to how to predict how the market's going to go, and a lot of hemp growers are finding that out the hard way, as they say. This next story comes to us from Minnesota, bringmethenews.com. DFL leader reveals plan for marijuana legalization in Minnesota. Uh, for those are those wondering, I was also wondering how to go look it up. DFL is Democrats of uh, Farmers and Labor. It's kind of a coalition, a left-leaning coalition, a liberal coalition, if you will. It's basically the Democrats in Minnesota as opposed to the GOP. Uh, about a week away from the start of the 2020 legislative session in Minnesota, and a DFL leader says he intends to propose a marijuana legalization bill early on. House Majority Leader Ryan Winkler from Golden Valley revealed the principles that will guide the legislation for the legalization of cannabis use by adults. It's based on findings and feedback at 15 Be Heard on Cannabis events held by Winkler and other lawmakers around the state in recent months. Um, among the tenets sent out by Winkler is establishing the cannabis market in a way that, quote, creates opportunities for inclusive economic growth with an emphasis on communities that have been disproportionately impacted by cannabis laws, such as the African-American population. Um, they also want to address the past harms created by the state's current cannabis laws, which comes after other states that legalize the drug included provisions allowing for prior marijuana offenses to be expunged from individuals' criminal records. They also want to um, encourage smaller businesses to, quote, keep, uh, quote, big marijuana from taking over the marketplace. So Minnesota, another state to look at in 2020. Many states attempting legalization through various forms, legislature, ballot box, uh, medical decriminalization, adult use legalization, there's a lot happening this year in uh, Minnesota. It's hard telling. There's um, there's some pushback, especially from 
the GOP controlled Senate in um, in Minnesota. So it's not definitely it's definitely not a done deal, or you know, well, basically the way it's been everywhere else. When we thought you know things look good in New Jersey, and then that didn't happen in New York and Connecticut, and the list goes on. And so we'll see what happens in Minnesota and continue to bring you updates from. Uh, what's the gold? What, what's what's Minnesota's nickname? I have no idea. The Vikings? No, that's the football team. I was going to go out with whatever their nickname was, but I don't I don't know it or don't remember it. At the very least, slash story from MLive dot com out of Michigan. Michigan recreational marijuana sales near eighteen million in two months. Uh, the industry was launched on December first, and uh, for comparison, Illinois. State began selling a state that began selling recreational marijuana on January first has generated nearly forty million in sales compared to the eighteen million for Michigan. Of course, Illinois had all forty-one of its licensed medical marijuana shops able to begin selling recreational marijuana immediately on January first. In contrast, the buildup in Michigan has been gradual. While the total number of licensed retail marijuana stores reached forty-three as of February fourth. Over the first few weeks, only a handful of shops were able to open, including the three that opened on December 1st. Uh, so far, according to the Marijuana Regulatory Agency in Michigan, it's issued the following recreational licenses. 43 retailers, one uh, small grower license, one larger grower license for uh, nine different companies, seven processors, four secure transporters, three marijuana event organizers, and one marijuana safety compliance facility. So, uh, things are ramping up in Michigan uh, is more sales. I mean, in Michigan, Detroit's not even selling. They don't have recreational shops in Detroit. Of course, they have them in Chicago. So there's big differences between Illinois and Michigan. And as soon as most of the places in Michigan start allowing supply and retailers, then you'll see those sales figures jump. Because uh, as I point out many times before, people want to buy marijuana. It's just... It's just the way it is. You know, I can't explain any better than that. People like marijuana. There's a large market for it. There's a large demand for it. People want it. So you open the stores that sell it, and it's competitive with where they've been getting it already, i.e. the black market. Then, you know, they'll start coming over to the legal market. And, uh, but the key to that is stores. Stores, more stores, more growers, more everything. More. Anyway, more, more episodes of this show. No, just five a week. We do it five days a week. Cannabis News, the Marijuana Times, marijuanatimes.org. Search the Marijuana Times on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when a new episode of the show has dropped. Thank you to NatureSide, nature-side.com, and their organic, all-natural pesticides. Thanks to all of you for watching and listening and commenting and sharing and liking and all that good stuff. Please continue to do so. We'll see you next time right here on Cannabis News. Cannabis News.